First up, um, could you give me a little overview of uh, your career? Sure. So my name is uh, Eamon Butler, and I'm the head of animation at Cinesite. We're a visual effects facility, primarily based in Soho and now in Montreal. We have a new office that's been open about a year. Uh, we've also just branched out into feature animation, uh, which is my background. Um, and it's new to the business of Cinesite, but it's something I've been very keen to do as part of uh, my role in the company. Uh, my background was originally I went to school in Dublin. Uh, I trained with David Brain, who uh, was a, a very old school, traditional uh, animator from Disney. And I learned how to animate traditionally from him uh, at Dunleary College in Dublin uh, on a really great course. And um, uh, from there, my first job in Dublin was on Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, the TV show. Went from there to London and all around Europe uh, doing 2D uh, until eventually uh, a friend of mine asked if I, if I wanted to get involved in uh, the creation of a PC game and learn the computer. And I thought that sounded really interesting. So uh, I tried that and then Disney were touring the world and picked me up uh, in London and brought me over to LA and I spent about 10 years in, uh, in Walt Disney feature animation as an animator, animation supervisor uh, and then supervising animator where I looked after the whole team and I ended up being the head of animation at the company during my last year. Um, then I came back to uh, Europe to work in London, um, I worked at the EA for a little bit. Uh, and then went to Double Negative in London to do uh, visual effects animation. Spent about seven years with those guys working on films like John Carter and Paul and stuff like that. And um, and then recently uh, I came to join Cinesite. They're very keen and excited to be uh, or to get into feature animation. So so that's what I'm doing now. Why did you choose animation in the beginning? Um, I didn't. Uh, I was in the army for a while. I was in the military. Uh, when I uh, was a younger man, which was a very long time ago, um, Ireland was going through something like it's going through now, it was going through a bit of a depression, economic slump, so there weren't that many options. And getting a trade, a uh, recognised trade, seemed to be the best option. Um, I never thought I could actually make a living drawing, which is what I loved to do as a kid. Uh, but when I was in the military, I, I sort of started drawing and doing other things, and I thought, you know what, this is, this is not the right job for me, I need to go do this. Um, I bought my way out of the military, put myself back through art college uh, on this uh, animation course. And I just connected with it and I just, I was really, I really uh, looked at it more like a craft with the artistic side being drawing and um, uh, applied myself, worked really hard. And uh, yeah, I've always enjoyed it. And um, I find drawing a challenge, I always have. The computer comes more natural to me, but animation is something I just love. Um, and I think it's kind of like, I can be a closet actor when I'm an animator. It's something that's very appealing to me. And how did you find the transition between 2D animation and 3D animation? It, the transition from 2D to 3D was really, 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 really hard back then because there were no courses. There was no YouTube. There was no internet. Um, uh, you couldn't get a book on how to do it. It was all really new. So I learned from my friend who showed me and he taught himself. Um, and then you know, I ended up having to teach myself even more. Um, and it wasn't until I was picked up by Disney that um, you know they invested in us and gave us proper tuition and uh, provided us with documentation and all that kind of stuff. But it was hard. You had to kind of think on your feet, really study and learn by mistake. Um, and I often look around at you know students nowadays and go, "You guys have it so lucky. There's so much information available. There's so many people willing to share that information with you." There's a lot. It used to be in my day that people kind of held back a little bit and didn't want to share in case it might affect their job prospects you know but nowadays there's so much freedom of that of that amazing input and information and it's a very different world now and I think it's a much better healthier place to be you've done feature animation you've done VFX yeah. you've done uh, games mm -hmm. um, does your approach change when you well yeah I mean your approach changes on every project irrespective of what, I'm, what format the project is games for example when you animate, it's not about making good looking animation, although it does have to look good. It's about creating animation that feels good to play. And that creates a different set of rules to make. So when you, when you have a character running forward on your controller and you immediately turn left, he has to immediately turn left. He can't pause, anticipate, wind up and run left because then he'd get killed in the game. So you've, it's a very different kind of um, uh, set of rules in order, in a, you know, a different sort of brief to meet. But it can be fun as well, but it's a whole different challenge. 
Um, TV animation tends to be more about creating lots of quantity, doing lots and lots of work very quickly. But if you look at it the right way, you can learn a lot of stuff because you get to try different things. You get to do runs, walks, acting, crowd scenes, everything, all of that stuff. Um, you don't get to polish as much, but that's the nature of that business. That the, you just don't have the time or the money to do it. But I always try to look at each one of these and, and see what can I get out of this? What can I learn and how can I get better and improve? And if it's about speed, well, okay, I'm going to figure out how to optimize my workflow so I can do a little bit more work. Um, and then I appreciate the scenes where I get a bit more time and, and uh, to put into the acting. Um, so yeah, I look at each one differently and I try to get something positive out of it. And I think that's sort of a smart way to do it. Otherwise, you're going to be miserable. So. How do you approach your animation from planning to polish? Do you ever uh, work flows? What, what I t so I don't animate as much anymore because I'm in a management, management role, supervision role. Yeah. But what I try to tell the animators is, you know, if you look at 100% of your time, I'd rather you spend 80% of it in planning and 20% in execution. So if you've been through school and you know how to animate, meaning, you know, you know about curves and timing and weight and all the principles and you know how to get that result in, in the software, it doesn't matter if the idea is not worth looking at. The idea has got to be entertaining, it's got to connect, it's got to have um, appeal, and it's got to be clearly done and staged well. And that takes planning and thinking. And you're better off, the minute you get a scene from your, your lead or your director, to sit down and think about it. The worst thing you can do is get straight into the computer. That's the worst thing, the biggest mistake you can make. Because what you end up doing then is creating something that you're going to carry until the end of that, until the delivery. And you're just going to change it and polish it. Whereas thinking about it might mean you get all your bad ideas out of your head on the first day to find the best idea. And what people tend to do is just, is just jump right in and work with the first idea uh, and end up you know, investing in that idea and spending a lot of time. And the more time you spend on something, the less you're willing to change and throw it away. So I like this sort of sketch mentality approach where think about it, rough it in really quickly, don't overthink when you do it, see what you get, get some feedback on it. If it's not right, throw it away and start again. But if you don't invest too much in the first pass in time, like you do really quickly, it will have spirit, it will have attitude and energy, and you'll be more willing to throw it away because it didn't take you too long to do it anyway. The longer it takes you to do something, the more psychologically uh, you want to hang on to it and polish it. So planning is everything, it gets you the best idea, and then executing is just the business of animation. But 90% of what we actually do in animation is thinking about performance and delivering a something that's worth looking at. With your current role as uh, head of animation at CineSight, uh, what are your duties? Uh, it's a good question. So I'm responsible for um, live action films that need visual effects, whether it's a crowd scene on the street, um, tanks rolling in, planes flying by, as well as monsters, creatures, superheroes, whatever, wherever my clients need, that's typically what I'm trying to figure out. Um, if it's a big show, or if I have a number of shows, I've got to go find a crew for each of those shows, make sure that the client's brief is delivered to the artist, and then back again, make sure their, their work is shown to the director with the, in the appropriate fashion. So I sort of represent the animator's work. Um, I'm equally responsible for working with production to make sure that we have enough time to do the shots, and if there are going to be any changes, that we can accommodate that, and then I filter that back to the clients and back to the artist. Um, before that even starts, I typically bid shows, so a script will come in, I'll look at it, break it down, figure out how much time is needed for animation, pass it on to production, and then we can plan how many animators we need and how much time we need, and how much we can charge the client for doing that. Uh, and that's visual effects. In feature animation, it's a little bit different in that you, you, you kind of your own client, and what you really want to do is get, get your artists and your production all thinking about what's best for that story. How do we make sure we make a great movie? Um, uh, instill really good working practices with the animators, make sure they understand the pipeline clearly so what's coming in is clean and works and what they deliver goes out clean. And then, you know, when it comes down to the animation itself, if I'm uh, supervising the animation, I'm going to do the same thing that Jason Ryan would look for or any other animation director or supervisor would look for, which is good, good working practices, blocking, um, getting approvals, getting feedback, taking that feedback and addressing it and then getting it back in front of your lead or director as quickly as possible until you complete it. Um, we have a variety of artists to work with, some really experienced, some less experienced. If you spend a little bit of time with the ones who aren't as experienced, help bring them up. And the ones who are experienced, you want to empower those guys to make sure that their experience flows down and around to everybody else as well. So I do kind of a lot of different things. You know, Ultimately, I'm, I can be responsible for winning a project in that I bid it, figure out how we're going to do it. Um, 
uh, get it in at the right price, and then I have to figure out how to deliver it at that price or bit or beat that price. Um, but ultimately, I'm also responsible for the quality of the animation, and that's um, and I do that by actually just surrounding myself with really talented people, and then they take all the credit. So. <laughs> and how do you manage to uh, keep your team, those creatives? Uh, still motivated after a few shows? Uh, after That's a great question and it's hard to do because schedules being what they are sometimes you have a bit of downtime sometimes you don't and sometimes you get to roll straight on to the next high pressure show and deliver it you know but my, 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 my sort of um, ethos is really uh, I learned a lesson a long long time ago um, in my early days as a lead and supervisor not to be a backseat driver because I've done, I did that in the past and uh, I had an animator who, who did a, a pass at a scene and I kind of like, no, 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 I want it exactly like this. And what I was really asking for was, I want it done my way, the way I would do it. When that animator did a perfectly good pass and I learned across that show, the animator got more depressed, more depressed. And I thought, what's going on? And I realized I'm, you know, I'm basically puppeteering the shot through them and that's not fun. They're not, they're not figuring it out. You know, the fun isn't figuring it out and I just needed to let go of that and it was a valuable lesson and since then I don't do that anymore. What I do is try to inspire the animator to understand and approach the brief the right way without actually telling them how to do it. So I trust people that, you know, I, if, if I've hired you it's because I trust you and I know you can do it. The next thing is let's figure out how to deliver a great performance. And if I find they're going off the rails, I have to push them back on the rails gently enough but they have to figure out what the plan is. It's their, that's their responsibility. If they don't do it, they're not going to invest in that shot and it won't look as good. My job is to exploit your talent and get the best perf performance out of you as an animator. And I do that by actually letting you own, own the question. Right? Why is this character in the shot and what do they need to do? That's your problem as an animator. I'm going to help you figure it out, but I'm not going to figure it out for you. And the more I can give you ownership of that, the better that performance is going to be. So that's, that is guaranteed to make you feel satisfied that you've done your best work. So no matter how stressful it is, if it's your work up there and your heart and passion and soul goes into it and your ideas are on screen, that gets you through that kind of high pressure stuff, you know. And then hopefully you just do that again on the next film. What was uh, your greatest obstacle in your career? Greatest obstacle in my career? Um, I don't look at it that way. I don't, I don't think there were any. Um, obstacles might be timing. Um, uh, I worked in a movie that got shut down after a year and a half. It wasn't really an obstacle, it just created a gap in my career that I then had to fill with something else. Um, so yeah, I don't really look, that's kind of negative thinking, stinking thinking. I don't really do that. So I look at everything as a challenge, I try to, same way an animator should. Um, there are no obstacles. If there's, a, if there's something that you don't know, you learn how to do it and get on with it, you know, or ask the guy next to you or figure it out. Um, and you can have fun doing that, you know. And it's okay to make mistakes. People people get very concerned about that, I think, in their careers. about Oh, I don't want to do a bad shot. It's okay to do a bad shot. If you, if you trust your lead and they trust you, you know, you're in their hands. And, and I think um, the key is to get a close connection with the person whose vision you're trying to deliver, the director. If you can do that and they trust you, great. You're, it's okay to make mistakes. They'll keep you honest and keep you on track. So I tend to not think about obstacles. I tend to, to think about what's the challenge and then try to figure out a way around it or to solve it. What was your biggest victory or the shot that you were the most proud of? Biggest victory, project? the one I'm the most proud of is always the one I've just done, right? So the one I've just finished was awesome. What's next? So, I, you know, I've kind of got goldfish memory when it comes to this. Um, I think, I don't think it's healthy to look back and go, oh, I really love that film that I did 10 years ago. Nothing's been the same since. It's like, they're all different challenges. I try to enjoy it in the moment it happens and get the best out of it. And, and then when you come out of it, you can feel really good. Because you work in some films for years, and you get about two weeks of glory at the end. And it's important to enjoy that process, not just the glory. By glory, I mean when the movie comes out and everybody loves it, and, and then they forget it, and they love the next movie. So that's great, but you can't live your career you know, with that being the upside. It's got the whole thing has to be the upside. So I try to enjoy it when I'm on it. Currently, the uh, visual effects industry is going to a certain crisis. With mm, yeah. um, how do you um, manage to avoid any of the problems that Rhythms and News have encountered and other companies as ahead? That's, yeah, that's a tricky one because 
the industry is it's tough at the minute with um, you know tax credits have really kind of changed the the way the business operates um, uh, so and it's I wish it wasn't like that but we've had to get on into that game so we've opened up in Montreal and we're able to offer tax breaks now so it means we're still competitive with other companies uh, but everybody's having to chase these these credits because that's what the production studios want they want that that money off the discount so it brings their overhead down and they can make more movies um, but it, it's difficult and you know you, you just what you have to do is never lose sight of the fact that it's really about quality as well you've got to deliver quality at a smart price you've got to think efficiencies all the time and plan properly and then defend your work you know make sure that you defend the things that are important about what's good in the culture of your company and um, I think good strong production management is very valuable it's something I've learned over the years particularly at Disney and uh, they were all amazing at production management and I learned my trade really there uh, over 10 years and really learned an appreciation for production management um, and there tends to be a them and us situation the artist versus the managers in in most studios and that just happens um, but actually it's you know everybody's trying to help each other get the film made on time and I think having come up through the ranks from being an animator to being a lead I can really see the importance of good strong planning and management and knowing when enough is enough if a shot's good enough to move on and saving and, and, and picking your battles and putting the energy into the things that really count and make the movie really better um, I've learned that as well over the years the value of that and I think you just have to stay on top of that and um, what works is when clients come back to you because you've looked after them and done a really good job and, and help the movie be great. So I think that's what we. That's my main focus, and that's right. where, that's what's going to get us through. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. And you've been in the industry for a lot of years. What mm. keeps you motivated? What keeps you inspired? You know what? Like coming to CTN was amazing. I I hadn't heard about it. I'd heard about it, but I didn't know how big it was and how cool it was. And Vicky, our producer, said, "You've got to come. This is going to be great." I'm like, eh, I wasn't sure, but having come reminds me. You know. Uh, as I walk the floor on CTN reminds me of my first days at Disney when I walk through this hall and you see artwork everywhere done by these, all these amazingly talented people who are far more talented than I am and that's like humbling and inspiring and kind of intimidating at the same time but it's good that's an energy you can feed off that and it makes you want to go back and do better and it's something I see a lot of in animation and I, I think it's an amazing part of the job that you never feel like you stop learning Or, or getting better and I think all you have to do is look at what another studio is doing and um, you know I saw, just saw Heather Training Dragon 2 recently and I was like oh my god I want to go do that I want to do something that well you know so I'm always inspired by um, like Big Hero 6 and when I, when I see what my peers are doing like, wow everybody's getting better and better and it kind of pushes me to want to take it apart and figure out how they did it and then do a better job than them I think I guess it's a little bit of competition as well it's a healthy thing Yeah. yeah, I feel the same. It was a great event, especially CTN. Yeah, fantastic. What's next for you? Uh, we've got four animated films that we're putting into our Montreal studios, the beginning of our feature animation studio experience. And I'm very excited about it. We're here at CTN to hire talent and, uh, and build a team that will hopefully deliver many, many films for us up there. And I'm excited about that. I'm excited about the opportunities that we're able to give people, the longevity we're going to be able to give people. And um, I'm getting back into story. I've been in visual effects for a long time. And we did our first short beans about a year ago, which is really healthy for us and, and different and changed the culture a little bit in our studio. I've got people thinking about making content from start to finish and getting involved in story. And um, I'm just looking forward to getting back into that and being involved in the whole thing again. Um, but I also love visual effects, but I'm, I'm, it's ready for me to go back to features now. Yeah. Great. Yeah. It was a pleasure to talk with you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I appreciate it.